Okay, in this enzyme investigation, um, which are enzymes involved in the digestion of uh, lipids, lipase and bile salts um, were used in the digestion of triglycerides. So before we start, let's just remind ourselves of, of what this involves. So we know that bile salts are responsible for emulsifying large uh, triglyceride droplets into smaller triglyceride droplets, increasing their surface area. So there's more sites for lipase enzymes to uh, hydrolyze the triglycerides. And we know that when triglycerides are hydrolyzed, it produces fatty acids and glycerol, or sometimes monoglycerides and fatty acids. So, as you can see, the first question, why does the pH decrease? And it's a, a good way of recording um, an enzyme reaction involving uh, lipase and triglycerides. Well, fatty acids are are a product, acids lower the pH, and that, so that is why the pH drops, because acids are produced from the hydrolysis of triglycerides. And we've got two curves, we've got a curve uh, without bile salts, and we've got a curve with bile salts. So the question two is describe the differences between the two. Well, two obvious differences, or hopefully they're obvious, is that curve Y it drops at a faster rate, so it's a steeper fall in pH, and it also levels off at 30 minutes, whereas curve Z doesn't uh, level off. They do also finish at the same final pH of 6.5 as well. So another thing that they did was they looked at the... We know that bile salts emulsify triglycerides, but to what extent do they do? If you increase the concentration of bile salts, what size do the triglyceride droplets become? If you remember, the smaller tri triglyceride droplet, the, the larger the surface area that you'll have. So question three would describe the data. I think the easiest way to describe data is to quickly put it into a sketch graph. So if you have the concentration of bile salts on the bottom and the mean radius of the triglyceride droplets at the side, you could see that you've got a, a linear relationship, you've got negative correlation. So as the bile concentration increases, the radius of the triglyceride droplets decrease. Question four, how could the size of the triglyceride droplets be measured? You need to think back to your work on cells and, and microscopes and how you can measure things using a microscope. If you remember your eyepiece graticule, where when you looked at the microscope you got something like this, uh, but in the eyepiece graticule you don't know what each of the subdivisions are worth, and they vary depending on the magnification. So if you had a triglyceride droplet like this that you're trying to measure oops, like this that you're trying to measure um, first thing you need to do is calibrate the eyepiece graticule so calibrate this so that you know what each division is worth so you calibrate the eyepiece graticule with a stage micrometer that's the first map point for number four and then what you'd have to do is count the number of eyepiece divisions so this in this case it would be uh, one two and a half uh, eyepiece divisions. To count the number of um, the diameter of the triglyceride droplet in eyepiece divisions and multiply it by the scale factor. So it could be multiplying that by 10 micrometers. Each of these could be worth 10 micrometers on one ma certain magnification. So that would give you uh, 2.5 times 10, so that would be 25 micrometers this triglyceride droplet might be. Anyway, um, so what we've done so far, we've calibrated the eyepiece graticle using a stage micrometer. We've then counted the diameter of the triglyceride droplet in eyepiece divisions and multiplied by that by the scale factor. So that gives us the diameter. We want radius. So then you divide that by 2 to get the radius. But it tells us here that it's not just the radius, it's a mean radius. So then you'd have to repeat this several times, at least three times, and then calculate a mean from that. So back to the first graph, question 5 said if you use 5% bile salts instead of 3% bile salts, what would the line look like on the graph? Well we know from the previous table that the uh, size of the triglyceride droplets would be 1 instead of 3 micrometers, so they've got a smaller surface area with 5% bile salts, so that means um, you'd have a, a, a larger surface area, so you'd expect to have a steeper, a steeper drop and that's because the, there's more sites for the lipase to act on. Um, and also it would finish at the same final pH because that is the pH um, produced when all of the triglycerides have been hydrolyzed. So you've got your, that's the pH of the fatty acids uh, that are produced at the end. 
So let's break it down into the mark points. First mark point would be you get a steeper decrease and it levels off earlier. Doesn't matter when, as long as it's earlier than 30 minutes. Second mark point. Um, so now explaining it, because you've got a larger surface area to volume ratio, so it's more, there's more surface for the lipase to act. Third mark point. There's a faster rate of hydrolysis, so fatty acids are produced more quickly. And they level off at 6.5, the pH of 6.5, as that is when all the pH produced, when all the, trig all the triglycerides have been hydrolyzed. So let's look at what we can take from the, the next uh, resource. We can see we're using monkeys, so they're similar to humans, but they're not humans. They're similar to monkeys, so you can uh, say they might have a, a similar response, but they're not human to they're not humans, so you could also say they have a different response to humans. Um, you can see that we've got a small sample size, which tells us that it's not representative. Uh, we can see that um, when looking at the numbers, each of these is a lower mean for unsaturated. When you compare the age groups with each other, so 16 with 16, that's lower. 32 with 32, that's lower. 60 with 60, that's lower. So there's a lower mean when matched for age. But we can also see that if you compare the two, like age with age, so 16 with, with 16, the standard deviations overlap. So if you take the standard deviation of that, if you add the st standard deviation into that, you can see we've got an overlap, so that's now 8.15 compared to 6.49. So that's not a significant difference, no significant difference. Or you could say unsaturated is not significantly lower. Also, you can see there's no statistical test been done. There's not been a t test done between the two 16 means. There's not been a t test done between the two uh, 32 means, etc. That so we cannot prove if the differences or if the decrease with unsaturated is significant. So let's look at the mark points for the question. It's an, it's an evaluate. So diet with unsaturated fatty acids should be recommended for people to reduce blood cholesterol. So our agree points would be that all age groups, the mean is lowered. Another agreed point would be we've used monkeys, so they've got similar physiology, closely related, so similar conclusions can be made. I disagree mark points. Standard deviations overlap at every age group. So they overlap for the 16s, these overlap for the 32s, and these overlap for the 60-month age group. At every age group, the standard deviations overlap, so it's not a significant de uh, decrease for unsaturated. Also, another disagree, no statistical tests have been used. And another, another disagree point, small sample size used, so it's not representative.